A sentiment I've been hearing quite often, actually, I've heard this from three different people recently, is that people would say, I'd be talking about the Catholic scene. I'm pretty involved with the Catholic young adult scene where I live. And people would mention, oh, I actually get along with people who are more in the secular world more so than people in the Catholic scene. And that is kind of intriguing. I'm, I'm a reaver myself, so I can kind of understand that. But there is something that is kind of respectable about polarization, having strong convictions. Um, there, like, there is something interesting about the psychology of villains. Like villains, they are, they are not, they usually have, they're driven. They're, they're strong and they have convictions. And the villains, I would say, are closer to becoming good than the people who are just lukewarm. And so because it's better for people to be uh, polarized, I don't think escalation is necessarily a bad thing. Here's some scripture. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 through 39 do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be of his own household. He who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. The lukewarm I will spit out of my mouth. I think there's a lot of truth to this. It's, I think uh, a lot of the people who are just in the Christian, Catholic, conservative uh, sphere their whole lives, they grow up, they go to, you know, Christian, Catholic high school, then they go to Christian, Catholic college, and many of these colleges are, are definitely modernist, then uh, they tend to be a lot less faithful well they're faithful but compared to the extremists who are converts and reverts and there's something to be said about um, conflict conflict does there is good that does come out of it out of kind of uh, for example the dogma of the Trinity emerged from the Council of Nicaea with the Arian heresy and there could be some pretty bad, there were some pretty bad heresies in the early, uh, the first like 600 years, or there's always been heresies, but church dogma kind of develops in response to the heresies. Like the Council of Trent wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the Protestant Reformation. So, um, going back to Matthew, it's true, we are in a spiritual war and the people that we are called to make an impact on more so than the people on the other part of the world is our direct family, our family members. How many of us have fallen away family members or you might be the only uh, conservative, Catholic, Christian person in your whole family where you got that cousin who's become an atheist. And these are the people that we need to, that we're called to, you know, challenge in a way. It's... I think a lot of baby boomer parents, they are afraid of being at odds with their children because their children, they don't want to estrange their children. They care more about the approval of their children than they do about whether or not their children is going to go to heaven or hell. You know, if you, if your son says, dad, I'm gay or something like that, most people, it's, it's really uncomfortable to tell them, no, that's a sin. That's wrong. You know, going completely against the culture and the media. But if you truly love someone, then you'd be willing to be at odds with them. And you'd be willing to, because, you know, if someone's an alcoholic, you're not going to be like, oh, that's just how, you know, everyone has different kind of uh, dispositions and vices. If you are, if you are disposition wise to be an alcoholic, then it's better to say, I know you're, I know this is tough. You're dealing with this, but you should stop drinking. And I'm saying this out of love, not because 
I think you're a bad person. So another thing to consider is knowing your audience and on what there's kind of a scale, you know, you can be really disagreeable or you can be really agreeable. If you're more masculine, you tend to be more disagreeable. If you're more feminine, agreeable. And there has to be, I think it's, I don't know, being 100% disagreeable, that's probably not the best move. Um, there's got to be like a golden mean, you know, at least for, for men. I'm a guy, so I've been, I'm definitely more disagreeable. I'm trying to figure out what is like the ratios. It may be 70% disagreeable, 30% agreeable, 80%, 20, something like that. There's got to be kind of a correct ratio. Uh, you got to build your own credibility first. You know, when you're, when you're trying to convert your family and friends, build your credibility, uh, have like that common ground that is true, uh, that is positive. It's also, it also doesn't make sense to needlessly be inflammatory. You don't want to be inflammatory just for the sake of being inflammatory. You want to be like very tactical with when you take your stand, pick your battles. That's a big thing. You know, sometimes you gotta, um, you gotta know when the time and places, and if you're praying, if you have an active prayer life, then hope, hopefully the Holy Spirit will prompt you to when the time is right to escalate. And it is better. Sometimes it might be better to escalate and it's better. It's better when things are more clear and more black and white. For example, 2020 was probably a good thing. There was so much bad that came out of 2020, but you know, 2020 vision, I don't have very good eyesight, but everything became clear. Everyone picked a side. So in that sense, that was probably a good thing that people showed their true colors in 2020. And the same people who were very, very much buying into the narrative in 2020 I can't see those people the same way because I, I see how they operate and that's not to say they can't change, but it just, uh, it gives me more information about them. And, you know, if, if someone has shown their true colors, you wouldn't, you don't get like uh, personally offended at that. You just, you're just like, oh, okay, this is where they're at. You know, you, if you see like a homeless person, you know, doing something crazy on the street, you're not like deeply to your core offended. You're just like, okay. That's, I wouldn't expect much more than that from this person. Given this is where they're at, they're probably mentally ill. So in the same way, you can view family and friends who are, it's it's truly, uh, you know, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you're going to be spiritually blind. It says so in the Bible that if you don't, uh, if you don't embrace, you can, an atheist can read the Bible, but the intellect is darkened by sin. So if you read the Bible and you're an atheist, the chances are you won't understand it to your core because spiritually you're blind. So you it, it, you truly need the Holy Spirit to be able to understand and, and to spiritually, there's like a deeper level of understanding than just like the logical brain. So in that sense, you don't, you got, we got to be charitable towards, uh, family and friends for that reason because they, they literally are perceiving everything differently from someone who does have the Holy Spirit and who is with God and it's for that reason that you know they they are blinded uh, in the movie Fight Club there was part of the way through the movie some of the homework that was given was to pick a fight with random people and there was a scene where you know they're just like Messing with people in public, you know, shooting a hose at people. Uh, I wouldn't agree with that, but I would agree with kind of the general sentiment of that, where sometimes it's good to uh, challenge people in some capacity because this can be done by asking questions, by, uh, and don't be afraid to be a polarizing figure because oftentimes these polarizing situations, not only does it help you articulate your own viewpoint and you know you might be ignorant in some ways and it helps you to become more aware of your own worldview but also it's you know it's good to have people kind of question their own worldview you know when if you uh 
if you've seen Dragon Ball Z, you know, every time Goku fights a new opponent, oftentimes later on they're on the same team. And there's there's something about kind of a, a mutual respect when you both have like true intellectual conviction and you're both going head to head. Um, that's that's that seems more pure than someone who is being intellectually dishonest. It's it's better to be just misguided completely. Like a Satanist might be more likely to become uh, a Catholic than like a, a, a moderate, you know, because the Satanist probably believes to some degree, some of them uh, in the supernatural or a neo-pagan might believes in the supernatural to some degree. Uh, so they're more likely to embrace uh, Christianity than someone who is just very moderate. So I think memes are really effective in kind of being inflammatory to some degree. There has to be, it has to be like a ratio, you know, of like how much you want to be at odds with people versus how much you're just building rapport and building credibility. And, you know, it might be different depending on the person. First, you got to get to know the person and where they're at. Then from there, then you can kind of like know, okay, well, this person's like, very extremist leftist so i'm going to, i'm going to probably approach it from this angle versus this person is really a nice person but he's not he's not very extreme one way or the other and perhaps perhaps a escalation might work better with the people who are lukewarm than uh, with others and there has to be a time and place too you know it has to be you have to pick your battles. You have to be kind of aware of the right time to do things. Uh, but for this reason, that polarization is good. The places that are extremely polarized, such as California. California is very left, very anti-God, very satanic state. If you are a Christian living in California, then chances are you have to have stronger convictions than someone who like a Christian who's just living, you know, in the middle of Alabama, because, you know, when, when things are, are further apart, when things are more polarized, then you have to really uh, have stronger convictions. So I think it's actually a good thing that Gen Z is a more polarized generation because they're not lukewarm. And Africa, they went from 9% Christian in the beginning of the 20th century to now they're over 50% Christian. And it was because they had so much, partially because, you know, the Muslims were extremely uh, polarizing. And the Christian versus the Muslim, like there was a war in like Sudan, North Sudan and South Sudan and all that kind of stuff. Really, uh, the blood of martyrs becomes the seed of the church. So in a way, it's it's kind of a good thing that things are escalating. I'm not an accelerationist where, you know, they believe that we need to actually like support things that are, are going to degrade things in order to escalate through the worst of uh, modernity the soonest. If things come to a head sooner, then they'll be better overall. I think that's not good. Uh, God has his appointed time for things to happen, but... Just keep that in mind. If you are, rather than thinking from a place of fear where you are considering to flee from your liberal city that you live in, perhaps you're needed there. Perhaps you are a necessary, God has placed you where you're at for a reason. And perhaps you can win people over in these polarizing times.